So this video is on water potential, particularly for AP Biology students. And so when we talk about water potential, the symbol that we use is this trident looking shape and it's pronounced psi. And so water potential is basically a way to measure how likely the water will move from one place to another. Now, if we think about two variables that will impact or influence whether or not water will move by osmosis, uh, well, hopefully at this point, you've already had a discussion in your class about solute concentration and how different uh, concentrations like hypotonic or hypertonic will influence the movement of water. But we also are gonna add in this idea of physical pressure. And so uh, we can represent these ideas of solute concentra concentration and the impact it has on the movement of water as the solute potential and then the pressure potential is written like this. So the overall formula for water potential is basically water potential is equal to the pressure potential plus the solute potential. So basically we're thinking about, okay, the likelihood that water is gonna move from one place to another is based on the impact of pressure and solute concentration. So let's go ahead and talk first about pressure. And so here I have a picture of a person like squeezing a water balloon. I want you to think about the water within that balloon. There's pressure pressing on that balloon. So the more you squeeze it, the more pressure there is. So if we think about this in water in a U-shaped tube, for example, we have what's called positive pressure, where if you press on one side of that, the water will move to the other side. Now, uh, what would we think negative pressure looks like though? Right, that's kind of hard to think about negative pressure, but really that would be like if you are pulling the water up. So the really only example I can think of is of negative pressure would be when a nurse or a doctor takes a syringe and like withdraws blood from your veins. Like that would be pulling and that would be like a negative pressure. Now, when we um, think about pressure though, adding pressure is going to raise the pressure potential. And so if we think about what that means, when you add pressure, water is more likely to move and therefore this is a positive value. It's going to increase the likelihood that water is moving. So therefore it's raising the overall water potential the overall likelihood that water is going to move from one place to the next because water potential has two components, the pressure and the solute potential. So if you increase the pressure, uh, the water, I'm sorry, the pressure potential, then it's more likely water will move. Now it is important though to realize that if we are talking about a cell in an open container, the pressure potential in an open container is zero. And the reason for that is there's only the atmosphere. And when we talk about pressure potential, it's always in comparison to like basically atmospheric pressure. So here in an open container, the pressure potential is zero. So really, if we're going to talk about um, water moving across the cell membrane in a beaker, for example, pressure is not really part of the equation anymore. So we would really only deal with solute potential and therefore it'll be solutes that determine the likelihood of how water moves across a membrane by osmosis. So let's go ahead then and talk a bit about solute potential. So in an open container, the water potential would be equal to the solute potential. And so the solute potential is um, basically how solutes influence the movement of water. So when we look at uh, this, Solute is basically just a fancy word for anything that is dissolved in water. In plants, for example, that would be mineral ions and sugar. So if we look here at this picture on the left, though, what we notice is if there's a lot of solute in the water, water molecules will be attracted to the solute and are less likely to move away from the solutes. So in this diagram, we can see how sodium has a positive charge and that partial negatively charged oxygen of a water molecule is going to be attracted to that. Therefore, it's less likely the water molecules are going to move away from that solute. Therefore, the more solute there is, the lower the water potential. So the less likely water will move away from the solutes because they're attracted to them. Now, on my previous slide, I mentioned how in plants it would be ions, but also sugar. Now, sugar is a polar molecule. So therefore, with sugar being a polar molecule, water would also be attracted to that sugar and less likely to move away. 
So when we add solutes, we actually lower the water potential. There's less likelihood that the water is going to move away from that side. Therefore, the solute potential is generally going to be a negative value. Now, let's go ahead and stop and check on ourselves for a minute. So here we have a beaker, an open beaker. Uh, therefore, the pressure potential is zero. And we're only going to look at solute potential to determine uh, water potential. So it's important to remember that or to see that water, free water, moves from regions of higher water potential to regions of lower water potential if there's no barrier to flow. So we can think about this in terms of back with osmosis, water moves from a high concentration to a low concentration. So let's think about if we put a cell into this beaker. Now, will the water move into or out of the cell here? Now, I tried to make it where the solution surrounding the cell appeared to be hypertonic. So if we think about, is water going to move into the cell or is water going to move out of the cell? Water is going to move out of the cell, right? And so now if we change the question to identify the region of a high water potential and a region of a low water potential, we want to think water is going to move or flow from a high water potential to a lower water potential. So in this example, the region of higher water potential is going to be, oh, I just put some numbers here to kind of show you um, numbers with this concept. So if we have inside of the cells like a negative 0.4, because there are some solutes within the cell, and then outside in this hypertonic solution, we have more solutes. So therefore, it is um, a more negative value. The water potential is lower. I just made up a negative 1.5 megapascal. So when we think about the region of higher water potential, that's going to be inside the cell. That is that negative 0.4 is like closer to zero uh, than the negative 1.5. So the higher water potential is inside the cell and water is going to move from high water potential to low water potential, which is outside of the cell. Now solutes do have a negative impact or negative effect on water potential. The more solutes, the lower that water potential. And you can kind of put that in your head um, similar to like a hypertonic environment. If it's a hypertonic environment, it's less likely that water is going to move um, away from that side. Rather, it's going to move into the hypertonic environment. So now let's go ahead and see how this applies. Like in plants, for example, that rely on the movement of water from the soil up against gravity into the atmosphere. So if water flows from a high water potential to a lower water potential, and we look at this plant, um, we want to think where in this diagram is the water potential the highest? Okay, so if water flows from a high water potential to a low water potential, and we see the water is flowing from the soil all the way up to the atmosphere, then the answer here would be C. The highest water potential is going to be in the soil or near the roots. Um, and then therefore the lowest um, water potential in this diagram is going to be in the atmosphere or in the tips of the leaves. Um, as water flows then from the roots to the lower water potential um, up in, near the atmosphere. So let's go ahead then and now add some numbers to this. So if the water potential inside the root is a negative 0.6 megapascal, what is a possible value for the water potential within the soil? If you want to pause the video and like think about this, that'd be great. Um, so hopefully if you're connecting the idea that um, water flows from a high water potential, to a lower water potential area. So therefore, in the soil, to move from the soil into the roots, the roots would have to have like a more hypertonic type of situation, right? They'd have to have a bit more solutes than the soil. And so the soil, any like acceptable, acceptable value um, closer to zero from the negative 0.6 would work here. So I just put negative 0.1 to negative 0.5 megapascal. However, I don't think the soil would ever be zero because the soil is not pure water, right? There's going to be ions. There's going to be solutes within the soil as well. But the idea here is that within the roots, there's a higher concentration of solutes and therefore the water is going to flow from the soil into the roots. Now, if you ever add like salt to your soil for some reason, or maybe like ocean water gets covered on ground on crops or something, then you would have more solutes in the soil and the water would flow from the roots to the soil. Anyway, now let's go ahead and think. If the water potential inside the root is negative 0.6, what is a possible value for the water potential within the leaves? So again, you can hit pause if you'd like. Now here, we want it to be, or it would need to be more negative, 
right? Like it even more solutes to have the water continue to flow up. So I just put negative 0.7 to however negative you want to go. Um, but if we look at like this image from uh, Google that I found, we can see how the water potential in the soil is negative 0.3. And then as we uh, move up the plant and into the atmosphere, the water potential lowers and lowers and lowers and becomes more and more negative. And that has an impact on the water flowing up against gravity. Okay, so let's go ahead though and revisit this formula. So overall water potential is composed of both the pressure potential and the site solute potential combined. So the pressure potential is just the pressure that's pushing water around and the solute potential is how much the solutes are affecting the water potential. Now in uh, AP Biology, we can actually use a formula to calculate solute potential. Yay, right? So uh, we have this formula negative ICRT. Now it's negative because remember adding solute lowers the water potential, makes it less likely that water is going to flow away from that side of the membrane. So let's go ahead and talk about what each of these letters mean. So I is going to be the ionization constant. Now what that means is how many molecules does it dissociate into in water? So if I have a beaker here and I add a glucose or even sucrose, uh, that's not going to like break apart into smaller pieces just by adding it to water. So I in this example is one. Now on the other hand, if I add salt, sodium chloride, when that enters into water, it's going to break apart into two molecules, right? Sodium and chloride. So I here would equal two. Now, let's go ahead then. At, if you're in AP Bio, chances are you're either going to have an I equals one or an I equals two in the different scenarios uh, presented to you from College Board. Now, uh, C is the molar concentration. Now, sometimes molar concentration could just straight up be given to you. Like I could say on the left of this, container is 0 0.0, which is pure water. And on the right, I've added solutes and now it's 0.2 molar. That's C. Now, sometimes there is a lab that can be done in AP Bio where um, potato cores, so like pieces of potato all cut to equal sizes, are placed into known concentrations of like a sucrose or sugar solution. Now, as you can imagine, if you put potato cells into pure water, like in the 0.0, .0 molar beaker, that uh, the cells are going to increase in size. There'll be a positive uh, change in mass. Water will flow into the cells, they will increase in size, and the potato will gain mass. However, in the 1.0 uh, molar, that's going to be a hypertonic solution, and then the water is going to flow out of the potato cells into the, into the beaker, and the potato will lose mass. And then there'll be a, a variation at 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, and 0.8. Now, if the question here is, what is the molar concentration? Like, what is the solute concentration within a potato cell, right? How do we find that from this experiment? Well, you would graph it. And so you could calculate the percent change in mass at each molarity of sucrose solution, and then you graph it. And in the zero, uh, like pure water, you're going to have an increase in mass. And then in the 1.0 molar, you're going to have a decrease in mass. And wherever your line crosses zero, that tells you, hey, there was no change in mass. Therefore, the solutes outside the cell and the solutes inside the cell were equal, and it is a isotonic solution. So if you follow that down, here we can say, oh, inside the potato cores or inside the potato cells, the molar concentration is 0.35. And so that would be how you would find it from a graph. And then we have two constants, or not, sorry, one constant. We have the pressure constant, which is 0 0.0831. And then we have temperature in Kelvin. So you would take your 273.15 plus degrees Celsius. Now, if you are in AP Bio, the uh, formula sheet on the AP test will be given to you. So you can pause the screen here and solve this if you'd like. But on the right-hand side is a screenshot of exactly what will be given to you from um, College Board. So there is the answer there. And now let's go ahead and uh, round this discussion out. So again, to summarize, water potential is both the physical squeezing and water flowing by osmosis. Both of those things are going to impact water potential. Now with osmosis, that deals with solutes and has a negative um, impact on water potential. It lowers our water potential. However, pressure pressing on a cell or 
on water will increase its likelihood of moving, which will be a positive value. Now, earlier in an open beaker, I used an animal cell. Let's talk about a plant cell now because plant cells have a cell wall and pressure does come into play. So let's say I put a plant cell into pure water, a hypotonic environment. There are solutes within the plant cell because it has a nucleus, it has organelles, it has ions on the inside in its cytoplasm. So on the outside, are, it's pure water in an open beaker. However, within the cell, there are solutes. So I just made up this solute potential of negative <laughs> three. Now, initially, water is going to flow in, right? It's in a hypotonic environment. Water will flow in to the cell, but eventually, as the water flows in, especially in that central vacuole, it's going to increase in mass, and then you're gonna have the cell wall exerting a pressure on that cell membrane. Whereas in, in the animal cells, our cells could possibly burst. We don't have a cell wall exerting pressure. Plants do. So the more solutes inside, because there's more solutes inside the cell, water initially flows in. However, uh, it, the cell wall exerts a pressure, a positive pressure, and eventually the solute potential will equal the uh, pressure potential and it'll reach zero. Water will stop flowing, having a net flow in, it'll be more equal in equilibrium, and the cell, uh, the plant cell will have a nice, um, like, turgid uh, appearance, right? And so there'll be a high turgid pressure within the cell, and this is uh, a happy state for plants. This is how they stand up against gravity. Um, but anyway, so plants do have the impact of a cell wall pressing on their cell membrane, so there is the impact of pressure with determining where water will flow in plant cells. Now let's go ahead, one last example. We're gonna talk about a little unicellular organism called a paramecium that uses a contractile vacuole to um, osmoregulate. So if you watch my, I have a video on this if you'd like to know more about paramecium and other unicellular eukaryotic cells. But let, they do live in water um, environments. So here, if we think about this, uh, which area in this diagram has a higher water potential? the intracellular or extracellular region. So a higher water potential is gonna be inside of this cell. The negative 1.0 is closer to water. And then we have, my next question, which area is hypertonic then, right? Um, assuming pressure potential is zero. Uh, the hypertonic area is going to be the outside with the negative 1.5. There's more solutes outside compared to inside. And now is water gonna flow into or out of the cell? What's well, gonna flow out of this cell, right? From a higher water potential to a, low, a lower water potential. Now, one more example. So let's change the numbers a little bit. Ooh, is the water um, potential higher inside or outside of this cell? Now, this looks to me like pretty close to a like pure water. So almost, well not almost, it's a hypotonic environment. And so here, this extracellular region would have a higher water potential. And so the water is gonna flow into this cell. And so, uh, oh darn, I already told you the answer, but the extracellular region is going to be hypotonic compared to the inside. And then will water flow into or out of? It's gonna flow into the cell. And then, um, oh darn, uh, how would this unicellular eukaryote osmoregulate? Well, it's gonna use that, it looks like a sun or <laughs> an organelle. Um, it's going to use its contractile vacuole to pump out the excess water and um, not burst. All right, all right, so that is my lesson on water potential. Hopefully it was helpful for you and great job.